welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 Horus Heresy Battle Report brought to you by the Legion Wargaming. The Imperium is riven by betrayal and war. The glorious plans of the Emperor of Mankind lie in ruins as his brightest son, the War Master Horus, is corrupted by the ruinous powers and turns his hand against his father, taking fully half of the Legiones Astartes into rebellion. The Loyalists, taken by surprise at the sudden betrayal, suffer huge losses across hundreds of expeditionary fleets and are reduced to a shadow of their former strength. But the traitor's victory is not complete as scattered bands of Loyalist Artis begin to regroup, combining forces with survivors of other legions. The necessity of striking back against the traitors outweighing any former enmity and forging new bonds of brotherhood. And today we witness one such force of Loyalists strike back. The worlds of Elixis, refusing to declare their allegiance to the War Master, have suffered a second in force compliance, this time at the hands of the 4th Legion, dispatched to this sector by the Lord of Iron, Perturabo himself. But a shattered force of Loyalists have gathered in sufficient strength to contest the Iron Warrior's domination of these loyal worlds. The Loyalist Terran Assault Commander Rykal of the World Eaters has grudgingly allied his Assault Echelon from the 608th Expeditionary Fleet with Captain Cortus and the 195th Company of the Imperial Fists, themselves survivors from the scattered Retribution fleet. They are joined by Wolfguard Halfdan Longknife and a single pack of wolves, dispatched from their legion at the Wolf King's command, but for what reason they will not say. Can this disparate force of Loyalist Artes reclaim these worlds from the battle-hardened veterans of Warsmith Garadon's Grand Battalion? and halt the tide of heresy in this sector? We shall see. The battle today is 5,000 points. It is Shattered Legions versus Iron Warriors. The mission is Blood Feud with Hammer and Anvil deployment. Let's take a look at the armies. This 5,000 point Loyalist Shattered Legions army consists of a single Battles in the Age of Darkness Crusade Force Organisation chart and contains Astartes from the 6th, 7th and 12th Legions. Their Warlord is a Praetor of the World Eaters. It is Assault Commander Raikal. He has a Combi Melter, a Power Fist, Digital Weapons and an Iron Halo and he has brought along his Command Squad. There are five veterans, two of them have Power Swords one has a power fist and they all have melter bombs. They are mounted in a rhino. And the World Eaters have brought along three of this detachment, six troops choices. The first is a Legion tactical squad. There are 17 World Eaters. They have bolt pistols and chain axes. They also have a vexilla. They are led by a sergeant with a power fist and melter bombs. And we have another Legion Tactical Squad. Again, 17 strong, bolt pistols, chain axes and a vexilla. Their sergeant also has a power fist and melter bombs. And the third troop choice for the World Eaters is a Legion Assault Squad. They have jump packs, bolt pistols, chain axes. They're led by a sergeant with artificer armor, a power fist and melter bombs. And... The World Eaters have brought along two of this army's elite choices. The first is an Apothecarian detachment consisting of two Apothecaries and the second is a squad of Cataphracty Terminators. There are five of them, two of them have twin lightning claws, one has a chain fist, two have power fists. There are also two Combi Plasmas and a Reaper Autocannon and they are mounted in a Land Raider Phobos with Armoured Ceramite. The World Eaters also have a fast attack choice in the form of a squad of six Rampagers. They are led by a champion with a power fist and all the other Rampagers have their Kaidere weaponry. They are mounted in a Land Raider Phobos with Armoured Ceramite. And we have two heavy support choices from the 12th Legion as well. The first is a Deimos Pattern Predator with a Predator Cannon and Sponson Laz Cannon. And the second is another Deimos Pattern Predator with a Plasma Executioner and Sponson Heavy Bolters. And then we move on to the 195th Company of the Imperial Fists. They are led by their captain, Kyrian Cortus. He is a Praetor of the 7th Legion. He has a Combi Melter and a Paragon Blade, and he has brought along this army's other three troops' choices. The first is a squad of 20 Breaches. Two of them have Melter Guns. Their sergeant has a Combi Plasma 
and a breacher charge. They also have a Vexilla. And then we have two Imperial Fist Tactical Squads. The first is 10 strong, led by a sergeant with a power sword, plasma pistol and melter bombs. They're mounted in a rhino. The second is also 10 strong, led by a sergeant with a plasma pistol, power fist and melter bombs. They are also mounted in a rhino. And the fists also have an elite choice, which is a Contemptor, Dreadnought, Talon. Two of these Contemptors have Kerry's Assault Cannons and Chain Fists. And the third has twin power claws. The fists have also got a fast attack choice which is a squad of ten phalanx warders. Their sergeant has a thunder hammer, three of them have power axes and two have melter guns. They also have a vexilla. They are mounted in a land raider, phobos with armoured ceramite. And then we have the wolves. They are led by wolf guard, half dan, long knife, he is a Legion Centurion, he has a Combi Melter, Artificer Armour and a Power Fist and he has brought along as an Elite's Choice, a Legion Veteran Tactical Squad. Two of these Wolves have Power Axes, one has a Power Sword, one has a pair of Lightning Claws and they've brought along their own transport as a Fast Attack Choice. It is a Storm Eagle with Twin Linked Multi Melters and Twin Linked Laz Cannon and today the Loyalists Thanks to having Assault Commander Raikal as their Warlord, we'll be using the World Eater's Right of War, Berserker Assault, which represents not only the homicidal mania of the 12th Legion, but also the savage ferocity of the wolves and the deep-seated loathing that the Sons of Dawn feel for the Iron Warriors. Speaking of the Iron Warriors, let's take a look at what they've brought along. This 5,000 point traitor Iron Warriors army comprises a single Battles in the Age of Darkness Crusade Force Organisation chart and today the Iron Warriors are led by their Warsmith. It is Warsmith Garadon. He has a Power Fist, Digital Weapons and an Iron Halo. He also has the Pride of the Legion, Right of War. He has brought with him his command squad of three veterans. Two of them have Power Swords, one has a Power Fist and they are mounted in a Land Raider Proteus with Armoured Ceramite. We have two more HQ choices as well. A Chaplain with a Power Maul and a Plasma Pistol and a Forge Lord with a Servo Arm, a Power Axe, a Refractor Field and a Cyber Familiar. There are four Elite choices in this detachment and the first three are Terminators. We have a squad of seven Cataphracti. They have a mix of power weapons, lightning claws, power fists. There is also a single chain fist and a heavy flamer and they are mounted in a Spartan Assault Tank with Armoured Ceramite and a Flare Shield. And the second squad of Terminators are also Cataphracti and also Seven Strong. They have Power Weapons, Lightning Claws, Power Fists. They have a Chain Fist and a Heavy Flamer as well. And the third and final squad of Terminators are Five Strong and they are wearing Tartaros Pattern Tactical Dreadnought Armour. They have a pair of Lightning Claws, two Power Axes, a Chain Fist and a Reaper Auto Cannon. And the last Elite's choice is a Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought with Twin Kerry's Assault Cannons and a Havoc Missile Launcher. Thanks to Pride of the Legion, Warsmith Garadon can call upon plenty of veterans. The first troop's choice in this attachment is a Legion Veteran Tactical Squad. There are ten of them. They have two Heavy Bolters with Suspensor Webs and their Sergeant has Artificer Armour and a Lightning Claw. The second troop's choice is Another veteran tactical squad, again 10 strong, and again with two heavy bolters with suspensor webs. Their sergeant has artificer armor and a power fist. And the third troop's choice is another legion veteran tactical squad. 10 strong, they have two flamers. Their sergeant has artificer armor and a thunder hammer. They are mounted in a rhino with a dozer blade. We have two more troop's choices. They are both legion tactical support squads. We have one with five melter guns mounted in a rhino and one with four plasma guns, the sergeant carrying a combi plasma, they are also mounted in a rhino. The Iron Warriors today have a single fast attack choice, it is a Storm Eagle with a missile launcher and twin link las cannon. Today it will be carrying one squad of cataphracti terminators and the Iron Warriors have also bought three heavy support choices, the first of which is their dreaded Iron Havocs, we have a squad of six with missile launchers. Their sergeant has an augury scanner. 
The Iron Warriors also have a Whirlwind Scorpius and a Sakaran Battle Tank with Las Cannon sponsors. And today, the Sons of Olympia are also rolling out the Super Heavy Armour. We have, as a Lord of War, a Super Heavy War Machine Detachment comprising a Typhon Siege Tank and a Cerberus Super Heavy Tank Destroyer. Both of these have Laser Destroyer sponsors. They're both also equipped with Armoured Ceramite. These are the Iron Warriors. They are not prepared to let a rag tag group of loyalists reclaim these worlds. They are determined to hold them for Perturabo and the Warmaster. Will they be able to do it? We shall see as we move into deployment. And the armies have deployed with the Loyalists, wasting no time in commencing their assault through the ruins of this city. On their left flank, it is the Imperial Fists who are advancing. We have one Legion Tactical Squad in their Rhino, and to their right, we have the Phalanx Warders rumbling forwards in their Land Raider. They are supported by the Breachers, who are led by Captain Cortus himself. To their right, we have the other Tactical Squad in their Rhino, but leading the charge of the Sons of Dawn are their Contemptor Dreadnoughts. They are looking to move as quickly as possible straight up this street. To their right, we have the first of the 12th Legion. Their assault marines are preparing to leap forwards from the cover of these ruins. And in front of them, we have a screaming wall of hatred already gunning. Their chain axes, both of the World Eaters tactical squads, have been joined by Apothecaries. And they are looking forward to launching a all-out frontal assault. They have the supporting fire of both of their predators, who have taken up good firing positions. Meanwhile... The command squad in their rhino have rumbled forward to a position behind these barricades. In front of them we have the World Eaters Cataphracti in their Land Raider. But the Imperial Fist Captain is already very annoyed as the World Eaters Assault Commander has abandoned his command squad in their rhino. He has joined the Rampagers in their Land Raider. They have already come crashing forwards through this building. They cannot wait to get to grips with the traitors, but the Imperial Fist is already cursing the World Eater for his recklessness. Meanwhile, high above the wolves are circling in their Storm Eagle, looking for their chance to strike. But across the other side of this sector, the Iron Warriors are preparing their defence. On their right flank, we have the Tartaros Terminators advancing, they are supported by the Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought. And to their left we have one of the veteran tactical squads moving forward in their Rhino, clearing the rubble with its dozer blade. But it looks like the Warsmith has a nasty surprise planned for the Imperial Fists as the Typhon Super Heavy Siege Tank has rumbled into position and has a great line of fire up this street directly into the face of the fist's attack. And the Typhon is supported by the other super heavy tank. We have the Cerberus tank destroyer already searching for targets. Behind the Typhon we have a Legion tactical support squad with melter guns in their Rhino. And moving up in further support we have the Sakaran battle tank. Advancing into the large ruined building in the centre of this city sector we have the other two veteran tactical squads. They are looking to set up a strong fire point amidst these ruins. They have the fire support of the Iron Havocs in the top floors of this ruined building. Meanwhile, the Whirlwind Scorpius is also preparing to fire from a great position in cover. Moving up this parallel street, we have the Spartan assault tank containing the Cataphracti. It looks like these Iron Warriors are going to take on the World Eaters, but they have the support of the Warsmith himself, his command squad, the Forge Lord and the Chaplain, who are behind the Spartan in their Proteus and the other Legion Tactical Support Squad with plasma guns are also moving forwards in support in their Rhino. Meanwhile, the Iron Warriors have their own Storm Eagle containing Cataphracti. It is also like the wolves looking for its chance to strike. This is shaping up to be a cataclysmic conflict. The loyalists deployed first, so unless the traitors can seize the initiative, 
we go into Loyalists, turn one. And with the Iron Warriors failing to seize the initiative, the Loyalists have begun their assault in earnest over on their right flank. The Rampagers and the Praetor have moved up six inches in this land raider. Looks like they are preparing to open fire upon the Spartan assault tank. Meanwhile, moving up in their wake, crashing through these ruins, we have the World Eaters Cataphracti in their own land raider. And following up behind them, we have the Legion Command Squad in their Rhino. Of course, all of the World Eaters Tactical Marines are surging forwards in the centre. They are running as quickly as they can. Meanwhile, the two World Eaters Predators, seeing only the Spartan Assault Tank with its flare shield in front of them, have advanced to find better firing positions to the left of the Tactical Marines. The World Eaters Assault Marines have also leapt forward. And the Fists are advancing as well, seeing what lies ahead. Captain Cortes has decided that his forces need to close the gap as quickly as possible. The Contemptors are leading the charge up this street. Behind them we have one tactical squad moving up at cruising speed in their Rhino. The Phalanx Warders have advanced six inches in their Land Raider. They are preparing to open fire upon the Typhon Siege Tank. Over on the far left we have the other Imperial Fist Tactical Squad moving up at cruising speed in their Rhino. Meanwhile, the captain is leading all of the breaches forward as well. This is an impressive sight. It is a wall of loyal Astartes that are closing in on the traitors. But the traitors' defence is looking extremely formidable. Let's see what the loyalists can do in loyalist shooting phase. Turn one. End of Loyalist Shooting Face Turn 1 and it started with disappointment for the World Eaters as despite the two Land Raiders and this Deimos Predator managing to get five LAS Cannon hits on the Spartan. The Flare Shield proved its worth as usual and the Mighty Iron Warriors vehicle was not damaged. Meanwhile the rest of the World Eaters continue to move forwards. This tactical squad are running up the street. And in the centre, this tactical squad have already breached this ruined building. They are hurling themselves forwards. The assault marines ran forward a couple of inches, but they have been blocked to some extent by these two Imperial Fist Contemptors. They opened fire on the Typhon, and with a hail of shots from their Kerry's assault cannons, they have managed to inflict a single whole point of damage. Meanwhile, the other Contemptor from the Talon with the two Power Fists has run forward five inches. The Phalanx Warders were disappointed. Their Land Raider managed to get two hits on the Typhon Siege Tank, but both of the Laz Cannon shots bounced harmlessly off its impressive frontal armour. Meanwhile, Captain Cortus ordered the breaches to continue moving forwards. They ran up another six inches. The Loyalists are doing an excellent job of closing in on the traitor lines, but they are disappointed that with all of their LAS cannon and assault cannon fire, they only managed to inflict a single hull point of damage. With no assaults, that brings Loyalists turn one to a close. They are bracing themselves for a return volley of fire from the Iron Warriors as we go into Iron Warriors turn one. End of Iron Warriors movement phase turn one and this Warsmith is proving very cagey indeed as he has actually pulled back his Spartan and his Proteus on his left flank to target the oncoming Rampages in their Land Raider. It looks like he is not going to make it easy for the World Eaters to close the distance and charge into his Iron Warriors. The tactical support squad in the Rhino have also adjusted. Meanwhile, the Iron Havocs and the Scorpius have held position in the centre. These two veteran tactical squads have begun to advance into these ruins. Although, they must be nervous as a lot of World Eaters appear to be closing in on them. On the right flank, the Typhon has held position. It is going to concentrate on landing. It's devastating primary weapon upon as many loyalists as possible. It has the Sakaran moving up in support and of course it has the Cerberus's supporting fire as well. Meanwhile these veterans in their Rhino have pulled back to allow this tactical support squad with their melter guns to advance. It seems the Iron Warriors are concerned about the Imperial Fists contemptors. The Tartaros Terminators are advancing and they are supported by 
this Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought. The Iron Warriors are not going to give their hand away too soon, but they're going to concentrate on a devastating first volley of fire as we go into Iron Warriors shooting phase. Turn one. End of Iron Warriors shooting phase, turn one, and the Typhon open the phase by opening fire with its dreaded primary weapon. It managed to land its shell on this central Imperial Fist Contemptor, although this dreadnought was only glanced. The other Contemptor was penetrated and shaken. Five World Eaters Assault Marines were torn to pieces and this Imperial Fist's Rhino was immobilised but the Phalanx Warders are relieved as their Land Raider managed to withstand the blast. And more good news for the Fists as the Typhon missed with its two laser destroyers. This Dreadnought appears to be living a charm life as it managed to endure the fire of the Sikaran Battle Tank and the Iron Warriors Contempt to Mortis Dreadnought without sustaining any more damage although it was glanced by the Reaper Auto Cannon carried by the Tartaros Pattern Terminators. The Cerberus had a very effective first volley of fire with its laser destroyers and its neutron laser. It managed to tear apart the Imperial Fist Contempt to Dreadnought with the two Power Fists. The Iron Warriors are happy about that. Meanwhile, their veterans continue to advance to take up firing positions in this central building, but it is over on the left flank that the Iron Warriors are most happy with their performance. The Spartan managed to do two whole points of damage to the Rampageous Land Raider. And although the Land Raider managed to avoid taking any more damage from the fire of the Proteus, it was the Iron Havocs who managed to do another two glancing hits and wreck the World Eater's vehicle. And of course the Rampagers are accompanied by the Praetor, who is this Shattered Legion Army's Warlord, the Iron Warriors are very much keen to take him out. That has all sorts of dire consequences for a Shattered Legion list. Meanwhile, the Whirlwind Scorpius was disappointed. It had a terrible scatter and only managed to take out a single World Eater from the Tactical Squad, advancing into the Central Ruins. The Iron Warriors are relatively happy. They have destroyed two high-value vehicles. They have also put the Loyalist Warlord in a very vulnerable position, but that round of fire could have been much, much worse, so the Loyalists are also breathing a sigh of relief. And with no assaults, that is the end of the Iron Warriors' first turn. The Loyalists are now very much looking forward to hitting back as we go into Loyalists' turn two. End of Loyalist movement phase turn two and at the start of this turn both the Fists and the World Eaters were disappointed that the Wolves of the Sixth have not yet deemed the time to be right for them to commit themselves to this fight but the Loyalists continue to press home their attack regardless. On the left flank the Imperial Fists are beginning to deploy. This tactical squad have disembarked from their Rhino and taken up a position on the firing step of this building. Their Rhino has motored out of the way as the breaches under the direction of the captain have come marching forwards. It looks like the Imperial Fists intend to deal with these Tartaros Terminators with a huge volley of bolter fire. Meanwhile, the Phalanx Warders have thrown caution to the wind. They are gunning the engine of their Land Raider and have come crashing through the bank of smoke caused by the exploded Contemptor. They now want to get to grips with the Iron Warriors at close quarters. Meanwhile, the two surviving Contemptors are advancing and the last tactical squad of Imperial Fists have deployed from their immobilised Rhino. The World Eaters continue to spill into this central ruin. The last five Assault Marines have leapt forward and this tactical squad are continuing to make steady progress through the rubble. And one Predator has motored over to give them supporting fire as well. Well, the other Predator has moved forward so that it still has line of sight to the Iron Warriors Spartan as the World Eaters Cataphracti have come smashing their way out of these ruins in their Land Raider. They are followed up by the other World Eaters Tactical Squad and moving through the ruins behind them we have the World Eaters Command Squad in their Rhino. Meanwhile the Praetor and his Rampagers are undaunted. They are hurling themselves towards the Spartan although it is a big ask. Can they do it? We shall see. They will certainly need some supporting fire as we go into Loyalist Shooting Phase, 
Turn two. End of loyalist shooting phase. Turn two and a massed volley of bolt of fire from the Imperial Fist Tactical Squad and Breachers has managed to cut down two of the Iron Warriors Tartaros Terminators through sheer weight of fire. But the surviving Iron Warriors are undaunted. Meanwhile, the Phalanx Warders are again disappointed as the last cannons on their Land Raider had no effect on the Typhon Siege Tank and neither did the two Kerry's Assault Cannons from these Contemptors, although one of the Dreadnoughts was firing snapshots. In the central ruin, the World Eaters judge the distance to be still too far to attempt to charge, so they have all run forward, this tactical squad and the assault squad, and these fists have also run forward a couple of inches. This World Eaters predator opened fire with its plasma executioner, managing to cut down two Iron Warriors veterans in the ruins, but the other World Eaters predator had no effect when it targeted the Iron Warriors Spartan. But the Spartan has Lost a single hole point to a glancing hit inflicted by the World Eaters Cataphractes Land Raider as the other World Eaters tactical squad come running past. And that could be very useful as the Praetor and his Rampagers still intend to charge the monstrous traitor tank in Loyalist Assault Phase. Turn two. End of Loyalist Assault Phase, turn two, and the Iron Warriors Cataphracti embarked upon the Spartan Assault Tank. Cannot believe it as a power fist smashes its way through into their troop compartment and peels back the armor like tinfoil. They find themselves face to face with a deranged World Eaters commander. Roaring die, traitors die. The Rampagers and the Praetor made their charge into the Spartan. The Rampagers had nothing that could hurt the mighty vehicle, but between them, thanks to Rage, the Praetor and the Rampager champion had 11 power fist attacks, and thanks to Hatred granted by Berserker Assault, that turned into 11 hits. And the point of damage done by the World Eaters Land Raider earlier this turn proved crucial as, with a roll of four sixes, the Praetor and the Rampager champion managed to take the Spartans' last four hole points. It is wrecked, and the Iron Warriors Cataphracti have come piling out. That is an excellent result for the Loyalists. Although, the World Eaters Praetor is still looking very vulnerable and may well fall soon. Even the Imperial Fists have to admit he has inflicted a critical blow upon the traitor's left flank. That is a great ending to the turn for the Loyalists. They are happy. The Iron Warriors are shocked. Let's see how they strike back as we go into Traitor's turn two. End of Iron Warriors movement phase turn two and witnessing the destruction of the Spartan close at hand. Warsmith Garadon is filled with an icy rage and his mood is not improved by the news that his other squad of Cataphracti in their Storm Eagle have failed to arrive from reserve, but he nevertheless sets about issuing short and brutal commands to deal with these World Eaters. The Cataphracti are marching forwards while the Warsmith has led his command squad from the Proteus in case their combat might is needed as the rest of the World Eaters close in. But the Cataphracti will have a lot of supporting fire as this squad of veterans have formed up, ready to pour rending shots into the Rampagers from this central building and the tactical support squad with plasma guns have moved forward in their rhino, disembarked and moved up to the first floor. They intend to fire a hail of plasma into the other flank of the Rampagers. And of course the Cataphracti can then charge. Things are looking grim for the World Eaters commander. Meanwhile, the other squad of veterans are moving forward. They intend to give a volley of fight into these World Eaters, but they are really counting on the huge fire support of the Typhon, which intends to launch its mighty main gun into this mass of loyalists. The Sikaran is still ready to give fire support, so is the Scorpius, and so are the Iron Havocs. And it looks very much this turn like the Cerberus has its sights set on the Phalanx Warders Land Raider. Meanwhile, the Iron Warriors are advancing on their right flank. The remaining Tartarus Terminators are moving forward to deal with the Fists. They have been joined by this squad of veteran tactical marines who have disembarked from their rhino. They are getting ready to pour some fire into the Fist as well. Meanwhile, 
this tactical support squad with melter guns are still in there, Rhino. They are biding their time. And of course we have the Contemptor Mortis ready to give fire support as well. The Iron Warriors have suffered on their left flank, but they are confident with a good round of fire. They can tear the heart out of the Loyalist advance on this side of the battlefield. We shall see in Iron Warrior shooting phase, turn two. End of Iron Warrior shooting phase, turn two, and a lot of fire was poured into the World Eaters Praetor and his rampages from these veterans and the Cataphracti and the tactical support squad with plasma guns from this building. It must be said the Rampagers made an awful lot of their 6 plus feel no pain rolls but four of them and their champion have still gone down leaving only the Praetor and one Rampager to face the charge of the Iron Warriors Cataphracti. The Proteus targeted the approaching World Eaters Land Raider Phobos but had no effect and the Scorpius had a disastrous volley of missiles this turn, managing to miss completely, doing no damage. But it is the Imperial Fists that have borne the brunt of the Iron Warrior's wrath during this shooting phase. The Typhon once again opened fire and this time the Contemptor that was hit was blown to pieces and the Blast also took out four World Eaters Tactical Marines and three Assault Marines but the World Eaters seem unwilling to fall back. This Iron Warriors Veterans Rod opened fire but had a very disappointing volley only managing to cut down a single World Eater. But the big news over here is the Phalanx Warders Land Raider was blown to Kingdom Come by the Cerberus and the explosion took out one of the Phalanx Warders carried on board but as they poured out these elite Imperial Fists attracted the fire of the Tartaros Terminators and the Melter Gunners firing from the top hatch of this Rhino as well as the Contemptor Mortis and there are only three Fists surviving but like the World Eaters they are not falling back. The other Contemptor once again survived all of the shots that the Sikara poured into it but it was finally taken out by a highly accurate volley of crack missiles from the Iron Havocs. Meanwhile all the way over on the right flank this squad of Iron Warriors veterans poured their fire into the fists in this building but in another disappointing volley only managed to take out two of them but there has been a lot of damage inflicted on the Fists attack on this side of the battlefield. The Iron Warriors are feeling confident and who can blame them with their Typhon and their Cerberus still sitting here with a lot of supporting units. But the World Eaters Praetor still needs dealing with and the Iron Warriors Cataphracti are charged to deal with him as we go into Iron Warriors Assault Phase turn two. End of Iron Warriors Assault Phase turn two and their Cataphracti made their charge into the World Eaters Praetor and the last surviving Rampager who screamed a challenge and leapt at the Cataphracti Sergeant managing to bury both of his Phalax blades in the Iron Warriors chest before he was turned into a red mist by a blow from one of the other Cataphracti's power fists. But it is a sad day for the Loyalists as the World Eaters Assault Commander has gone down to a blow from another of the Iron Warriors Power Fist. But unsurprisingly, he fought like a demon before he fell, managing to take out three more of the Iron Warriors Cataphracti. But that is a sad loss for the Loyalists. It is also slay the Warlord for the traitors. Usually in a shattered Legion's force, the loss of their Warlord is catastrophic as their Astartes no longer count as sworn brothers. Instead, they count as distrusted allies, meaning that none of the Imperial Fists or Space Wolves can score. And of course, in a Shattered Legion list, none of their units are denial either. Fortunately for the Loyalists, this mission is Blood Feud, which is effectively kill points. Hopefully, the loss of the World Eaters Commander will not affect them too badly, but we shall see. That brings Iron Warriors turn two to a close. They have achieved their objective of taking out the Loyalist Commander. They have also inflicted a lot of damage on the Imperial Fists. Let's see how the Loyalists strike back again in Loyalists Turn 3. 
Start of Loyalist turn three and the howl of engines heralds the arrival of the Sixth Legion as the Wolves cruise in dangerously low in their Storm Eagle over the ruins. It looks like they are moving to reinforce the World Eaters attack on the right flank. The loss of the World Eaters commander has hit the Loyalist hard but they are determined to make the traitors pay as we go into Loyalist movement phase turn three. End of Loyalist movement phase turn three and the Iron Warriors steal themselves as it looks very much like the Loyalist charge is about to hit home. Over on the left flank, Captain Quarters, who now finds himself in command of this shattered force, continues to advance stoically with his breaches. It looks like they may attempt to charge on these Iron Warriors veterans. Meanwhile, the tactical squad have reformed their firing line. In this building, they are going to try to gun down the Tartaros pattern terminators. These Imperial Fists continue to advance. They are supported by the World Eaters Predator, which may well attempt some long range shots against the Iron Havocs. These very dangerous Iron Warriors support marines need to be dealt with now that the Wolves have arrived in their Storm Eagle. In the centre, the Phalanx Warders and the last two World Eaters Assault Marines have their eyes on this veteran tactical squad and these World Eaters look like they are going to charge into the other. In a surprising move, these World Eaters Cataphracti have come smashing through the wrecked Spartan in their Land Raider. Looks like they are not going to be happy until they have driven deep into the traitor's lines but the Cataphracti that they have driven past have all sorts of problems as a huge tide of World Eaters runs at them howling down the street. The World Eaters command squad are advancing still in their Rhino and the World Eaters on this flank can still count on the supporting fire of their other predator and of course the new supporting fire provided by the Wolves in their Storm Eagle. The Loyalists are still optimistic that they can smash through several traitor units this turn. We shall see as we go into Loyalist shooting phase, turn three. End of Loyalist shooting phase, turn three, and the disciplined fire of the Imperial Fist is beginning to pay dividends on this flank as the Breachers launched a huge volley of bolt pistol and melter gun fire, taking out four of these Iron Warriors veterans, and the Breachers are looking to charge. Above them, in the building, this tactical squad managed to cut down two out of the three remaining Tartaros pattern terminators in another very effective volley. These fists have run forward another couple of inches and their rhino has managed to repair itself. This World Eaters Predator did open fire on the Iron Havocs, managing to take out two of them, but it is still going to be a very nervous Iron Warrior shooting phase for the Storm Eagle, we think. These Marines all fired on the veterans they intend to charge but had no effect. This tactical squad of World Eaters decided they did not want to make their charge any harder. They already need a 7 because they're charging through difficult terrain. So they have not fired with their bolt pistols but the other tactical squad managed to take out one of the Iron Warriors Cataphracti with a huge volley of bolt pistol fire. This World Eaters Predator did not manage to hit the Iron Warriors Land Raider Proteus but the Proteus has lost a single hole point to a glancing hit from the Storm Eagle's LAS cannon. The Storm Eagle then fired its missiles into the Iron Warriors tactical support squad in this building, causing six wounds, but the Iron Warriors made all of their power armor saves. Meanwhile, the command squad moved flat out in their Rhino. Looks like they are trying to flank the traitors, and the plan of these Terminators appears to have revealed itself. They have a chain fist. There are precious few of those in this Loyalist force. They may well be moving through to get to grips with this Typhon, although the Laz cannons fired by power of the machine spirit had no effect on the mighty vehicle. But the Loyalists are hopeful that they can make a lot of charges in the next phase and do a lot of damage to the traitors. Loyalist assault phase Turn 3. End of Loyalist Assault Phase Turn 3 and Captain Quarters led his breaches on a 12 inch charge against the Iron Warriors veterans and that was very bad news for the Iron Warriors as the Captain personally dispatched their veteran sergeant and two other veterans with his Paragon Blade and 
his breaches easily took out the last three iron warriors although before they fell the traitors did manage to take out a single imperial fist that was a good result as they have also consolidated six inches and this lone surviving tartaros terminator now finds himself well and truly surrounded but things certainly did not go the loyalist way in the center as these veteran iron warriors calmly gunned down both of the World Eaters Assault Marines with their volley of Overwatch and then struck ferociously in assault taking out all of the Phalanx Warders before they could swing their power axes. That is a excellent performance from these Iron Warriors. The other veterans were destroyed by the charging World Eaters. All of them fell but again they performed quite well taking out three World Eaters with their Volley of Overwatch fire and another three in the assault. This World Eaters tactical squad is suddenly looking a lot weaker. But it was a different story for the other World Eaters tactical marines who charged up the street and easily overwhelmed both surviving Iron Warriors cataphracti before they could swing their power fists. So it looks very much like the Loyalists are oh, well and truly hitting home in the traitors lines although casualties on both sides are mounting up we do not know who is in the lead in terms of kill points we are going to leave that as a surprise until the end this game seems at the current time to be very finely balanced the iron warriors do of course still have their super heavy war machines which are looking very very solid on this flank and we're not sure how the loyalists are going to deal with them but First, we will see what the Iron Warriors do as we go into their third turn. Start of Iron Warriors turn three, and as the World Eaters begin to pick their way past the wrecked Spartan, they are cast into shadow as the Iron Warriors Storm Eagle cruises overhead. Looks like it has its sights set squarely on the wolves in their own Storm Eagle. Could this be the signal for a traitor counterattack? We shall see. Traitors movement phase turn three. End of Iron Warriors movement phase turn three, and it looks like a counterattack is coming at least on the Iron Warriors left flank as the Proteus pulls back. Warsmith Garadon, the Chaplain, and the Forge Lord are leading the command squad in an assault upon these World Eaters, but the Warsmith is too canny to do so without plenty of fire support, so he has ordered the tactical support squad with plasma guns in this building to give fire against the World Eaters, and he will also be calling upon the supporting fire of the Whirlwind Scorpius. But he has ordered a lot of the Iron Warriors to bring down the Wolves in their Storm Eagle. The Iron Warrior Storm Eagle will be targeting the Wolves as well. The Iron Havocs and if necessary the Proteus may try a couple of snapshots with its twin linked LAS cannon. Meanwhile over on their right flank the Iron Warriors have been doing some manoeuvring with their heavy armour. The Typhon has pulled back to give fire onto the Breachers with its primary weapon which is probably the reason why this Tartaros Terminator is running away from these Imperial Fists across the street. Meanwhile the Sakaran has moved round to bring the World Eaters Land Raider into its sights but the Cerberus has also pivoted to bring its Neutron Laser to bear against the World Eaters Terminators as well. That could be very very bad news for the World Eaters. The Contemptor Mortis has held position to give fire with its assault cannon on any of the breaches that survive the Typhon's fire. These Iron Warriors have not yet disembarked from their Rhino. They're going to fire from the top hatch with their Melter Guns, again in the hope of mopping up any Imperial Fist of Survivors. And of course the Rhinos will give fire as well. And in the centre, these veterans have held position. They intend to cut down as many World Eaters as they can with a hail of Bolt of Fire. The traitors are still confident at driving the Loyalists back. Let's see how they get on in Iron Warriors Shooting Phase Turn 3. End of Iron Warriors Shooting Phase Turn 3 and Captain Cortis and his breaches were granted a reprieve when the massive blast of the Typhon's primary weapon scattered, only taking out three of them and of course the Iron Warriors Tartarus Terminator who was making his escape across the road. But nevertheless they have taken a lot of casualties, five alone from the Twin Kerry's assault cannons of the Contemptor Mortis and another two were taken out by the two Iron Warriors that opened fire from the top hatch of their Rhino with Melter Guns. But the Cerberus was very disappointed as it managed to inflict no damage at all on the World Eaters Land Raider. But 
This Sikaran performs slightly better managing a single penetrating hit which has shaken the World Eater's vehicle. These veterans in the centre were disappointed with their volley of Boltify. They only took out two World Eaters and of course the deranged Astartes still refused to flee and more bad news for the Iron Warriors as their Storm Eagle did nothing to the Wolves Storm Eagle other than make it jink although the Iron Havocs performed better they managed a glancing hit and a penetrating hit which has shaken the Space Wolves Flyer Meanwhile, the Scorpius has finally made its presence felt, tearing apart six of these World Eaters, although the fire from this tactical support squad was absolutely dire, thanks to some great work from the World Eaters Apothecary. None of his Marines fell, but one of the Iron Warriors was taken out as his plasma gun overheated, and finally the Proteus tried to add its fire against the Space Wolf's Storm Eagle as well, but missed despite being twin-linked. Warsmith Garadon is cursing the incompetence of some of his minions. He is still going to lead a charge against the World Eaters though. As we go into Iron Warriors Assault Phase Turn 3. End of Iron Warriors Assault Phase Turn 3 and Warsmith Garadon led his command squad in a successful charge against the World Eaters Tactical Marines. The World Eaters fought ferociously managing to slay two members of the Iron Warriors Command Squad but in the end the attacks of the Warsmith the Forge Lord, the Chaplain and the remaining veterans was enough to slay all of the World Eaters. That brings Iron Warriors turn 3 to a close. This battle is still too close to call as we go into Loyalists turn 4. End of Loyalist movement phase turn 4 and the Breachers led by Captain Cortis have formed a firing line. In these bunkers, they have a melter gun. The captain still has his combi melter. Looks like they're going to try and take out the Iron Warriors tactical support squad in their rhino. Meanwhile, these fists have held position to give supporting fire. And in the centre, this tactical squad of Imperial fists are marching doggedly through the wrecked dreadnoughts. They have their eyes set on these Iron Warriors. The Iron Warriors are surprised to see the World Eaters leap from the battlements into the street. But... The reason becomes clear with the Warsmith now exposed. These World Eaters cannot resist the chance to take him on, especially combined with the Wolves. Their Storm Eagle has moved forward. They have disembarked and it looks like the Wolves have been waiting for the Warsmith to show his face all along. They want to take him out. Even the World Eaters Legion Command Squad have deployed from their Rhino. They cannot charge this turn, but if the Wolves and the other World Eaters can hold up, these Iron Warriors maybe they can put in a charge in later turns. The Storm Eagle itself is going to fire upon the Command Squad as is this World Eater's Predator. Meanwhile, this World Eater's Predator intends to support the Imperial Fists in their fire against these Iron Warriors veterans. Meanwhile, this Land Raider has pivoted to bring its weapons to bear on the Sikaran and its assault ramp has slammed down. It looks like the World Eater's Cataphracti are finally going to reach their target, which is the Typhon. They have a chain fist and some power fists. If the Loyalists can take out this super heavy tank, that may well be the decisive moment in this battle. And they have a good chance of taking out the Warsmith as well as we move into Loyalists shooting phase turn four. End of Loyalist shooting phase turn four and the phase started very poorly for the Loyalists with this Land Raider missing with both of its shots against the Sikara and despite them being twin linked and also the Breacher with the Melter Gun and Captain Cortis missing this Iron Warriors Rhino with their Melter shots but other than that this was an excellent phase for the Loyalists. The Iron Warriors veterans in the centre were all cut down, five of them, by this World Eaters Predator and the remaining three in a hail of bolt of fire from these advancing fists and at long range from the fists in this building. But the big news is the Iron Warriors command squad is no more. Their standard bearer was taken out by a snap shooting las cannon shot from the Wolf Storm Eagle. Then the chaplain was blown apart by a las cannon shot from this World Eaters Predator. Wolfguard half Dan Longknife then raised his combi melter and incinerated the Forge Lord and that left Warsmith Garadon standing alone, surrounded by wolves and World Eaters. 
The loyalists calmly raised their bolters and executed the traitor with a hail of bolter fire. Even his artificer armour could not stand up to the 11 wounds he sustained. That is a fantastic result for the loyalists. It is worth a lot of points. And of course, the World Eaters warlord has gone down. And... Their turn is not over yet. The Cataphracti intend to charge into the Typhon in Loyalist Assault Phase Turn 4. End of Loyalist Assault Phase Turn 4 and once again the Berserk Assault of the World Eaters has got the job done. Their Cataphracti tore into the Typhon. The two Terminators with Power Fist managed to inflict two glancing hits and then the Terminator with the Chain Fist carved through the Mighty Vehicle's hull another three times and it exploded. Although the World Eaters have paid for the ferocity of their assault as two of the cataphracti were torn to pieces in the explosion but that does nothing to alter the loyalists view that this has been an excellent turn they've taken out the typhon they've taken out the entire traitor command structure including their warlord there's no doubt that the iron warriors are reeling how will the traitors strike back from here we shall see iron warriors Turn four. End of Iron Warriors movement phase turn four and despite the monumental losses they sustained during the Loyalists last turn the Iron Warriors still believe that they have enough forces to achieve victory in this battle. We shall see they have set about picking their targets. The Cerberus wants another go at this Land Raider surely this World Eaters vehicle cannot survive another volley of fire from the super heavy tank destroyer. Meanwhile, these Iron Warriors with melter guns have deployed from their Rhino. They intend to deal with the World Eaters Cataphracti. The Sakaran is moving forward to drive back the advancing fists with a hail of fire. Meanwhile, hoping that these Iron Warriors can deal with the Cataphracti, this Contemptor Mortis would like to unleash its Kerry's assault cannons once again on the Imperial Fists breaches. The Iron Havocs still up in the building. They are determined to deal with the Wolves Storm Eagle this turn and they may have the supporting fire of this Land Raider Proteus as well. The Scorpius intends to drop its payload on all of the Wolves and World Eaters that it can. It is preparing them for a charge from these Cataphracti who have deployed from the Storm Eagle which has dropped into hover mode and it intends to blow apart this World Eaters Predator. Meanwhile the Iron Warriors Tactical Support Squad with plasma guns have climbed to the next floor of this ruined building. They are going to pour plasma fire down onto the World Eaters Command Squad. There certainly is a lot of potential for the Iron Warriors to inflict serious damage back on the Loyalists. Let's see how they get on. Iron Warriors shooting phase. Turn 4. End of Iron Warriors shooting phase turn 4 and just when it looked like the Loyalists had gained the advantage in this battle, the Traitors have put in an excellent shooting phase which has put them right back in the running. Starting with the Cerberus which vaporised the World Eaters Land Raider with its laser destroyers and neutron lasers. And then these five Iron Warriors and Melt Guns managed to take out two of the Cataphracti. Crucially, the only Terminator left has lightning claws, making him much less of a threat to the Iron Warriors' vehicles. And therefore, the Contemptor Mortis opened fire on the breaches once again, cutting down another four of them, and another two went down to these Rhinos' twin link bolters. Captain Cortis only has three breaches left with him. The Sakaran opened fire on the advancing Imperial Fist tactical marines in the centre, managing to cut down three of them, but the stalwart fist refused to fall back. The Iron Havocs once again demonstrated how deadly they are managing to inflict two glances and two penetrating hits on the Space Wolves Storm Eagle. It jinked desperately, but it was still blown out of the air. It has scattered from the battlefield. The Iron Warrior's own Storm Eagle performed very well, managing two penetrating hits with its twin link LAS cannon on this Predator, then finishing it off with another penetrating hit from its missile launcher. And it is the Wolves that have felt the wrath of the Iron Warriors over this side of the battlefield. The Scorpius opened fire, managing to take out two of them, and the Proteus took out another with a LAS cannon blast, deciding to keep up the assault on the 6th Legion. The Cataphracti opened fire, managing to take out another three of them, and then the Iron Warriors with the plasma guns in this building also opened fire. In fact, there is only Wolfguard, Halfdan, Longknife, and a single Space Wolf left with him. That 
is a very effective counter punch paying the wolves back for the death of their warsmith and the iron warriors are not finished there the cataphracti in turn to crush the life out of the wolves utterly they are going to launch an assault in iron warriors assault phase turn four End of Iron Warriors Assault Phase Turn 4 and the Sons of Russ have enjoyed only a very brief appearance in this battle as the Iron Warriors Cataphracti made their charge easily, pounding the two Space Wolves to oblivion. Although the Wolf Guard, Half Dan Longknife, did manage to take out one Iron Warriors Terminator with his Power Fist before he was torn to pieces. And that turn has been very, very impressive from the traitors. We still have no idea who is in the lead. This battle could still go either way as we go into Loyalists Turn 5. End of Loyalist Movement, face turn 5, and sensing that victory could slip from their grasp, Cortus has ordered all of his remaining fists to advance upon the traitors. He's leading his last three breaches. A tactical squad is moving up in support behind him, and this tactical squad are moving forwards as well. All of the Imperial Fist Sergeants have melter bombs, maybe if one of them can put in a charge on the Sakaran, that will be enough to tip this side of the battlefield in the fists' favour. Meanwhile... This Predator has moved back to bring its Plasma Executioner to bear on the Iron Warriors Cataphracti and the World Eaters are hoping that that deadly weapon can do a lot of damage as the few surviving World Eaters Tactical Marines on this side of the battlefield are preparing a charge against the hulking traitors. Meanwhile it looks like this Tactical Support Squad have Problems as the World Eaters Legion Command Squad is scaling the building to get at them and the same applies to the Iron Havocs. If they're not paying attention, this World Eaters Terminator is going to give them a very bad day. Let's see what the Loyalists can achieve in their fifth shooting phase. End of a very short Loyalist shooting phase turn 5, it looks like the Loyalists are running desperately low on range firepower now but the World Eaters at least are pleased with their performance as this Predator managed to take out 3 Cataphracti with its Plasma Executioner and another was felled by a hail of bolt pistol fire from these Tactical Marines as they prepare to charge. Meanwhile, these Fists have not fired nor have the other Tactical Squad of Imperial Fists, they both are going to attempt to charge into the Sakaran with their melter bombs. Captain Cortus tried to hurl a crack grenade into this rhino, but missed with a roll of a one, and that is about it. The Loyalists really need a good assault phase if they are going to develop any kind of advantage this turn. Let's see if they get it. Loyalist assault phase, turn five. End of Loyalist Assault Phase Turn 5 and it has been another great phase for the Loyalist. Raising his sword high and yelling for dawn, Captain Cortus led his three remaining breaches into this Rhino. He managed to do two penetrating hits with his Paragon Blade and then one of the breaches finished it off with a crack grenade. Meanwhile, seeing the heroic example set by their captain, both of the Imperial Fist Tactical Squads also made their charges despite one needing a 9 and the other needing an 11 and the two sergeants slapped melter bombs onto the hull of the Sikaran. Both of them penetrated, causing the vehicle to be shaken and crucially stunned which means it will not be able to move away surely these fists will easily finish it off during the next assault phase meanwhile the iron havocs bitterly regretted their brother's decision to leave one terminator alive as he charged into them with five attacks re-rolling to hit thanks to hatred and re-rolling to wound with his lightning claws he butchered all four iron havocs and he is standing roaring in triumph and it's the same story with the rest of the World Eaters. These Tactical Marines charged into the two remaining Cataphracti, easily butchering them both with their chain axes before they could heft their power fists. And the banner of the 41st Assault Echelon is flying from the top of this building as the command squad made their charge and cut down all of the Iron Warriors with plasma guns. That was a truly inspiring phase from the Loyalists once again. The Iron Warriors are reeling. They have very little left now. Let's see what they can do in Iron Warriors Turn 5. 
Men of Iron Warriors, movement phase turn five and sensing that this battle could be incredibly close in terms of victory points. The Iron Warriors are setting about trying to achieve as many kill points as possible. And to that end, the Contemptor Mortis intends to cut down all the remaining breaches. And these Iron Warriors with their melter guns are looking forward to trying to take out the captain with them. He doesn't have an iron halo, so if the breaches goes down, he should be easy pickings for the Iron Warriors. Meanwhile, although it is hilarious overkill, the Cerberus has turned to bring its weapons to bear on this Lone World Eater's Cataphracty Terminator. The Scorpius and the Land Raider Proteus intend to deal with all of these World Eaters with a barrage of missiles and then a couple of LAS cannon shots and all the way over in the Loyalist Deployment Zone, the Iron Warrior Storm Eagle is lining up for an attack run first to take out this predator and then hopefully to continue down the line taking out some Imperial Fist Rhinos in later turns. We shall see. The Iron Warriors have the opportunity to score quite a few points here despite having hardly any forces left. Let's see how they get on. Iron Warrior shooting phase turn five. End of Iron Warrior shooting phase turn five and the phase started off with an embarrassment as the Cerberus missed the last surviving world, Eater's Cataphracty, with both of its laser destroyers and its neutron laser, despite the neutron laser being twin linked. And this world eater cannot quite believe his luck if he's even paying attention. But the Iron Warrior's other plan on this flank went perfectly as the Contemptor Mortis and this tactical support squad cut down all of the breaches and then Captain Cortis himself. The Iron Warriors are very happy about that. The Sikaran was firing snapshots but it still unleashed all of its weaponry against one of the tactical squads that are trying to ensure its destruction, managing to cut down two of the fists, but the fists are not willing to retreat when they have this tank at their mercy. The Scorpius and the Proteus combined their fire, but they were disappointed only taking out three of the World Eaters from this tactical squad, the Apothecary and the Legionary with the Vexilla are still alive. That was very disappointing. And even more disappointingly, the two penetrating last cannon hits that the Storm Eagle managed to get on this World Eater's Predator were both shaken. The vehicle remains alive. It won't be doing anything next turn, or nothing much, but that is another victory point denied to the Iron Warriors. We have one assault as the Imperial Fist try to finish off the Sakaran in Iron Warriors Assault Phase Turn 5. End of a very brief and quite predictable Iron Warriors Assault Phase Turn 5 as two more Melter Bombs placed on the Sakaran and by the Fists easily tore it apart in a huge explosion but protected by their power armour none of the Fists were harmed and that is another loss for the Iron Warriors but as we progress into the last turn of this game we still have no idea who is in the lead or how many victory points either side has. Let's see what the Loyalists can do as we go into their last turn. Loyalists turn six. End of Loyalist movement phase turn six and the Imperial Fists are marching forward to get some vengeance for their captain. They're hoping to wipe out this Iron Warriors tactical support squad with a hail of bolter fire. They may be joined by the twin link bolters on the Imperial Fist Rhinos which are moving forward trying to get into cover in preparation for the strafing run of the Iron Warriors Storm Eagle. The World Eater's Predator has moved forward at cruising speed. It is shaken anyway. Maybe it's trying to draw the Storm Eagle off. Meanwhile the two remaining World Eaters from this squad are moving forward trying to get into cover but the Legion Command Squad are dropping down through the floors of this building. They have selected an easy target for their Melter Bombs and Power Fists as the Iron Warriors Tactical Support Squad's Rhino is still parked on the ground floor. And finally this Cataphracty is moving down towards the Whirlwind Scorpius. He has enough attacks to take it out but Maybe at the least, if he charges it and does a couple of whole points of damage, he can get it to move in the Iron Warriors next turn. We shall see. We are expecting the next phase to be very brief. It is Loyalist Shooting Phase, turn six. End of Loyalist Shooting Phase, turn six, and disappointment for the Fists as their mass bolts of fire from both tactical squads and the Rhinos only managed to take out two of the Iron Warriors carrying melter guns. The World Eater's Predator has moved flat out. 
Meanwhile, the rest of the World Eaters prepare to charge both of the squads, the Command Squad and the Tactical Squad, missing. The Iron Warriors Rhino with their crack grenades, but they're still going to charge, as is this Cataphracti. As we go into the Loyalist last phase, it is Loyalist Assault Phase, turn 6. End of Loyalist Assault Phase, turn 6, and the Legion Command Squad and the couple of remaining Tactical Marines both made their charges into the Rhino on the ground floor of this building, easily tearing it to pieces. That's another point for the Loyalists, but... This cataphracty, despite making his charge into the Scorpius, could not do any damage to the Iron Warriors vehicle. And that is it. The Iron Warriors have one more turn to inflict some more damage. Let's see if they can do it. Iron Warriors, turn six. End of Iron Warriors, movement phase turn six, and the Iron Warriors still over this side of the battlefield. Sense an opportunity to wipe out at least one of these Imperial Fist tactical squads. The Contemptor Mortis intends to fire upon them, the three remaining Iron Warriors with Melter Guns and even the Rhino. Meanwhile the Cerberus is crunching forwards over the debris from the exploded Typhon. It still wants to take out this Cataphracty. The Scorpius has not moved, it wants maximum firepower for its barrage. It's going to try and take out the two remaining members of the tactical squad behind this building again. Meanwhile the Iron Warriors are taking something of a risk, they are hoping that the Proteus can take out the approaching World Eaters Predator. Meanwhile, their Storm Eagle has gone hunting for another victory point. It's going to try and take out one of the Imperial Fist's Rhinos. We will see if that pays off for the Iron Warriors in Iron Warrior Shooting Phase. Turn 6. And of Iron Warrior shooting phase turn 6 and it's been a disappointing phase for the traitors as the combined fire of these Iron Warriors with Melter Guns and their Rhino and the Contemptor Mortis only managed to take out three fists from this tactical squad and the Sons of Dawn are going nowhere. These Iron Warriors are also not going to charge in because the Sergeant with his Artificer Armor and his Power Sword is standing right there. The Iron Warriors are going to trust to fate and hope they have more victory points. The Cerberus cannot believe it. Once again, this Cataphracty survived. This time it was hit by one Neutron Laser Shot and a Laser Destroyer. It made both of its 4 plus invulnerable saves. Meanwhile, the Scorpius run of bad luck continues as it tried to drop its missiles onto all of the World Eaters in this building, but they scattered and missed the battlefield. This Proteus managed to hit the advancing World Eaters Predator twice with its last cannon, but both last cannon shots rebounded harmlessly from its frontal armour and finally the Storm Eagle was also disappointed managing to get two LAS cannon hits and a missile launcher hit on an Imperial Fist Rhino but all of that resulted in only a single glance and the vehicle survives. The Iron Warriors have failed to add any more victory points during their final turn that could be crucial. They have decided not to launch an assault against the fist, so that brings their turn and the game to a close. We need to calculate victory points. We still have no idea who is the victor. What we do know is this has been a very close and tense game. We will be right back with the victory point scores. And the final victory point scores have been calculated. The traitorous Iron Warriors managed to take out from the World Eaters, their Praetor, their Rampagers and their Land Raider, the Terminator's Land Raider, one Tactical Squad, their Assault Squad and one of their Predators. From the Imperial Fist they took down the Captain, the Breachers and the Phalanx Warders with their Land Raider and all three of their Contemptor Dreadnoughts and from the Space Wolves they killed their Centurion, all of their veterans and their Storm Eagle. The Iron Warriors have destroyed 17 units, earning 17 victory points. And their secret blood feud target was infantry. They have managed to destroy six of the Loyalist infantry squads, giving them another six victory points, taking them to 23. And they also managed to achieve Slay the Warlord, giving the Iron Warriors a final victory point score of 24. The Loyalists managed to take out the Iron Warriors Warsmith, their Forge Lord and their Chaplain, along with their Command Squad. They also took out both squads of Cataphracty Terminators and the Tartaros Terminators. All three squads of Iron Warriors veterans were destroyed, as were the Iron Havocs, and 
the tactical support squad with plasma guns. They also managed to destroy two rhinos, the Spartan assault tank, the Sikaran and the Typhon. And for the Typhon, because it is a Lord of War, they get an extra point for the price of failure, giving the Loyalists a score of 18. Their secret blood feud target was tanks. They have taken out five, giving them another five victory points, taking them up to 23. And they also got Slay, the Warlord, bringing them to 24, the same as the Iron Warriors. But there is one additional victory point available in this mission for Last Man Standing. And as the Loyalists still have nine units left to the Traitor's Seven, they get that extra point. The final score is 25 points to the Loyalists, 24 to the Traitorous Iron Warriors. It is a Loyalist victory, but after all of this carnage, the two sides are only separated by a single victory point. That shows how close this game has been. And both sides have torn the heart out of the enemy. The Loyalists have struck a blow against the forces of the Warmaster in this sector, but at what cost all of their leaders have fallen? The World Eater, the Imperial Fist and the Space Wolf. And without their leaders, will these Loyalists be able to continue the fight against the traitors? Who knows? But all we know is this game has been great fun. We absolutely love these Horus Heresy games. We hope you enjoy them too. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and we will keep producing as many Warhammer 40,000 and Horus Heresy Battle Reports as we can. See ya. <laughs>